Hello, hello everyone, this is Outstar and welcome to the series of video tutorials about Hunter Garage, our actual play show, which we've made using this pretty cool virtual table. In the series, I will share tips and tricks on how to do the things we've done for the Chronicle in order to use them at your virtual tables and have your online games with friends a little bit more interesting. We're going to start with something simple, creating your own 3D backgrounds, your own personal space that you can use in order to enhance the atmosphere at the table. No matter if you're playing a Vampire the Masquerade game and need a very moody night scene or maybe Hunter, maybe Werewolf with some really cool forests, we can make all of that with some simple tips and tricks. First of all, we're using Tabletop Simulator in order to get this cool scene. You can get Tabletop Simulator on Steam and in order to change the background of the scene, you gotta go to Objects, Backgrounds and here you have them. As you can see, Tabletop Simulator has some basic ones. We can check them out very quickly. They are quite basic, but also can be useful for your chronicle depending on what you plan to do. But don't worry, there's a way bigger choice out there. In order to find the perfect background for your table, you need to find HDRI images. I found two websites for you which offer them on the Creative Commons license, which means that you can use them for free, but they are way more out there. One of them would be polyhaven.com and the second is hdrmaps.com. I downloaded some of them and I will show you how the custom ones could look like. So I'm going to go to Objects, Backgrounds, but this time I'm going to click on the custom one. Tabletop Simulator asks me to upload my image from my local drive. I will pick one of those which I've chosen on the website and load it in. In order for your players to be able to see it in the multiplayer, you have to upload them on the cloud. But for this particular case, because I'm only showing it to you, I'm going to choose Local. Now I'm going to Import. And voila, we are now on the night street. This is a Polish city and I could easily set up a by night campaign using this background. Here's how it looks like without the UI. Now let's check out the second one I downloaded. I'm again pressing on the browse and picking the second map. Picking the local, import, and here we are in the very old cathedral. This could be a very good start for a faithful hunter campaign. But as you can see, there's a little problem here. Because of the height at which the photo was taken, it seems like our table is floating. And unfortunately, in Tabletop Simulator, we cannot adjust the position of the table. In order for a background to fit perfectly, we should create it ourselves. And I'm going to show you how to do that just a little bit later. First, let me guide you through the process of preparing an image like this for a Tabletop Simulator. But we're going to do it with a little twist. Let's say I found this picture. Only problem is, it's daylight and I really want to have a nightly picture. We're going to make some edits on this one in order to fit the Vampire the Masquerade theme a little bit more. I'm using Photoshop, but you can use any other software which is able to edit the EXR files. First of all, there's one thing we have to change in order for this picture to be readable by Tabletop Simulator. As you can see, the format of this picture is RGB slash 32. That means it's a 32-bit picture. We have to lower it down to 8. So I'm going to go to Image, Mode, and pick 8 bits per channel. This will change how the picture looks like, but I have a lot of options here in order to adjust the colors. I can change the light radius for the edge glow, strength of the lights, and I'm going to make it look a little bit more like a nightly scene, so it's going to be easier to edit. Contrast a little bit lower, exposure a little bit lower, perfect. And there we go, I'm actually pretty happy with this. Let's press OK. This still doesn't look like a nightly picture, but we're going to change this one. But there's one more thing we have to do in order to make sure that this picture is going to be read by Tabletop Simulator, and that is to change the size. I'm going to go to Image, Image Size. And as you can see, this picture has more than 4,000 pixels. The tab that Tabletop Simulator gives you is 4,000, so I'm going to change that to 4,000. This is the max size we can have in Tabletop Simulator. I'll press OK. I will duplicate the layer to show the difference. And now I'm going to do some edits in order to make the scene look a little bit like a nightly one. The easiest thing we can do is a photo filter. Here we can pick a cooling effect and I'm going to pick the last one for more of the cyan vibe and make sure it's way higher. If you decide not to preserve the luminosity, it's going to make it even darker. This could already work, but if you want to do something more, I recommend going for adjustment and curves. With the curves, you can make sure that your picture looks even more nightly. Lower the blue a little bit in order for it not to be so saturated. You can also opt for additional adjustments with hue and saturation. You can make the picture a little bit more blue, a little bit less saturated to get that really nightly vibe. Maybe change the lightness a little bit. And for that additional pop, I recommend adjustments and vibrance. A little bit more saturation, a little bit more vibrance, and voila. 
Here's the before and here's the after. We're going to save this picture as a regular JPG. Save as a copy. Go for JPG and I'm going to call it my night map. And here in Tabletop Simulator, I'm going to load this picture as my background. Objects, backgrounds, custom. My night map, open this and I will choose local. But of course, if you want to play in the multiplayer, do pick the cloud. Ta-da! This looks cool, although as you can see, it looks a little bit more green on my head. And this is because I have additional lighting settings on. In the options, you can go to lighting. Here you can change LUT from many potential options, just to give you a few examples. I pick one which I actually like, and I think this looks pretty good. This table is of course made for the very warm setup of Hunter Garage, so it doesn't really play color-wise very well with this light, but this can do. Now, I'm sure you wonder, how did we actually make this custom background in here? This is actually not difficult at all, although it might seem difficult at first, as we're going to use Unreal Engine, same engine in which many of the modern video games are made in, and you can download it for free. First of all, we're going to start with getting some assets. Now, you can of course make assets yourself, but that would make for a much longer tutorial, so I'm going to skip that one. You can go to Unreal Engine marketplace in order to find the assets which you can use as the background. There's a free section and there's a permanently free collection which has a lot of really awesome stuff. You can pick and choose from many of the things that you can find in here. And keep in mind that the free collection has also free for the month section. I usually check this one every month to see what cool stuff has been added and sometimes I download things in order to use in my chronicles and little projects. In order to make a garage one, I was searching for something like a garage. And as you can see, I found this particular asset. This is the price in Swedish Kronas. It's about $35, so it's very affordable. I've also recognized that the same asset was used in the video game Phasmophobia, which was pretty funny. This asset in particular came with the fully dressed garage scene, so I didn't actually have to put all of these things together. But I recommend trying it out if you find some other assets which do not have a scene attached. If you think about it, it's basically like Lego or The Sims. You can place stuff around the map however you want and make some cool scene out of it. And at the same time, you will learn something about the level design in video games. But how do you export this to Tabletop Simulator, you ask? Well, it's actually quite easy. To make it even easier, I recommend opening a window called Place Actors. And in the search classes, type Capture. One thing that you will see is a scene capture cube. You can drag it into your scene. This shows a really nice camera which you can move using these arrows on the sides. Just drag and drop them. If you want to rotate your camera, press E on your keyboard and this will turn into this nice circle, which you can move the same way. I'm going to place my camera a little bit further behind, like this. And now here, in the details window, I have something called the texture target. I'm going to press on this arrow in here and press cube render target and save the file anywhere that you will remember where it is. I'm going to call it my background. Click save. Now you can click on the content drawer down below and your background is going to be right here. I'm going to double click it. And as you can see, this already resembles the HDR pictures which we've seen before. One thing that I don't like about it is the quality. It's pretty low. We should change the size in here in order to make it bigger. I'm going to set it up to 1024. Enter. The screen may be black for some time, but do not worry. You can move this tab somewhere down here. And as you can see, it does capture our scene. And there's a better thing. Now you can move the camera and see live how the picture is going to update. Let's say I want to be a little bit closer to the table. I'm going to move my camera in here. A little bit down. There we go. If you're happy with the scene, you can export this picture for your use. In order to do so, go to your content drawer again. Right click on your background and make sure to save it. Click. There we go, this little icon which you had in here now disappeared. Now right click again and press create static texture. As you can see, it also has this little icon in here, we have to get rid of it. So we're going to go right click and save. Perfect, and now we can export this texture for our use. When it comes to the actual compression, you can find it here under compression. The default is going to give you an HDR file, which is completely fine if you have Photoshop or any other graphics software which can open it. So we're going to right click on this one, go for Asset Actions and Export. As you can see, it is a HDR file and we're going to save it in the location which we're going to remember. I press Save. And now I will open the texture with Photoshop. 
open. There we go, looks pretty good. I'm going to do the same exact thing as I did with the previous picture. Change the mode to make sure that this is 8 bit per channel. Image, mode, 8 bits. This changed the colors a lot, but I can quickly fix that. Just make sure to have some fun with these sliders. There we go, this looks actually pretty good. I'm going to press OK. And save this one as a JPG. Save as a copy. JPG. And this works just okay. I'm picking the maximum quality, pressing OK. And importing it to my tabletop simulator again using objects, backgrounds, custom. Browsing local files, picking my backgrounds UE4, which I've saved before. Local imports. And there we go. And as you can see, the quality is a little bit too off. We need something better. And also we are too close to this table. So it's time to go back to Unreal, move our camera a little bit back, like here, maybe a little bit this way too. We're going to go for even higher quality, 2048. That should be enough. And we're going for the exact same process. Content drawer, save. I can delete this one because I am not a fan of that one. Create static texture, save. And we're going to go again for asset actions, export. And we're going to replace the previous one with this one. This one looks way better. Changing the mode to 8 bits. Making sure that the sliders are all okay. I like this one, but we need to change one more thing. 2 or 4, 8 is going to give us a little bit too big of a size for tabletop simulator, so we need to make it smaller. Changing to 4000, to 2000, pressing OK, and it's time to save it as a JPG. This time I'm going to call it fixed. Press save. OK. And let's see how this one will do. Going to backgrounds, custom, upload, UE4, fixed, local. This actually looks really nice. I hope that you like this little tutorial about how to make your own background for playing virtually with your friends. Subscribe to our channel to get more role-playing advice from World of Darkness team, and I recommend to watch Hunter Grash, Hunter Groofening 5th edition role-playing show, in which we use a lot of cool stuff like that. Do not get lost in the night, hunters, and I'll see you in another one.